Hello, welcome back on my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show how to calculate the stream power index using PC raster tools in QGIS. I'll also show you how to calculate the sediment transport index. The stream power index, or SPI, is a geomorphological metric used to quantify the erosive power of water flow in landscapes. It's a measure indicating the potential for water to erode, transport and deposit sediment. It can be used to help predicting erosion and deposition patterns in a landscape, which is useful for understanding and managing a variety of natural hazards and land use issues. The stream power index can be calculated by using the natural logarithm of the specific catchment area times the tangent of the slope in radians. The sediment transport index is a measure used in geomorphology to quantify the potential for erosion and deposition in a landscape. The sediment transport index is a function of the specific catchment area of a pixel and its slope. This index is used instead of the one-dimensional slope length factor as in the universal soil loss equation. High values of STI indicate areas of the landscape where overland flow has a high potential for doing geomorphic work, such as erosion and transport. Conversely, low STI values indicate areas where the potential for geomorphic work is low. Note that in literature you probably find different equations for these indices and uh, also you can note that often the uh, exponents used in the equations can be different. So I have a digital elevation model here and the first thing I need to do is to convert this DEM to the PC raster format because we're going to use PC raster tools and the output data type is scalar and I save it to a file on my hard disk uh, called DEM.map. In this video I assume that you have installed PC Raster in the PC Raster Tools plugin and you can see other videos uh, on how to do this. Later in the process I need the pixel size and I can find the pixel size of the DEM in the layer properties. And here you see that the pixel size is 5, which means 5 meters. Note that the positive value of the pixel size is for the X dimension and the negative one by convention for the Y dimension. The next step is to calculate the flow direction and I'll use the LDD create tool from the PC raster tools. I keep all the defaults and I save the result as flowdirection.map. This can take a while depending on the size of your raster. And here's the result. With the flow direction raster, I can now use the Aquaflux tool to calculate the flow accumulation, but it also needs another input, which is the material layer. This is a raster uh, with the materials that need to be accumulated. And in this case, I just use a value one, it has to be scalar. So I count the amount of pixels that are contributing from upstream to the pixel under consideration. I save this as a material and run the algorithm. This results as expected in a raster where every pixel has now value one. I'll use this material raster as an input in the Acuflux tool for LDD layer, I choose the flow direction. For material layer, I choose material and I save the result as flow accumulation.map. We run it and here is the result. And uh, we need to style it a bit to see what is calculated. Um, flow accumulation has uh, very extreme uh, values. So uh, let's first choose a ramp. Can use Viridis, but we invert it so the more blue, the bigger uh, the streams, the more cells accumulate. And if I switch to cumulative count, I see here the drainage pattern. So the value of the cells mean how many upstream cells drain to that cell. The next step is to calculate the slope, and you can find it under derivatives of digital elevation models. Use the DEM as an input and save the result as slope fraction because the slope tool from PC raster calculates the slope as a fraction. Here's the result. We can style it using single band pseudo color because it's continuous data. And we can stretch the colors a bit in the current map canvas. To convert the uh, slope fractions to degrees, we need to use the 
Atom function, the arc tangent or inverse tangent. So the input is the slope fraction, and then the output is slope degrees. Run it, and there is the result. So now we have all the inputs to calculate the string power index. We can calculate the string power index using the raster calculator. Create the following equation. Use the natural logarithm. Double click on flow accumulation. Click the times button and add here the pixel size, which is five by five meters. So we multiply the pixel size uh, with the flow accumulation. So we know the total upstream area or the specific catchment area of the pixel. Then we multiply this with the tangent of the slope in degrees, which we need to convert to slope in radians. And we do that by um, dividing pi by 180, which is 0 0.01745329, etc. Need some brackets to close the equation. Then we define the output name. Make sure you have diff as the extension because you cannot write to PC raster format and click OK. And there's the result. And now we can style the result using the layer styling panel. Choose single and pseudo color. You see that the value range can be uh, negative for the flatter areas and we can set that to zero. And now you can see in the legend that uh, the more green or yellow it gets, the more power the stream has for erosion. Now we can go back to the raster calculator to calculate the uh, sediment transport index. Start with a bracket. Then similar as with the stream power index, you need to uh, multiply the flow accumulation by uh, the pixel area. It's five by five meters to get the specific catchment area of each pixel. And we divide that by 22.13. Let's put this whole term in brackets because we need to raise it to the power of uh, 0 0.6. As said in the beginning of this video, you can see different uh, parameters in the literature. But here we just use uh, 0 0.6. And this whole term will then be multiplied by the sinus. of the slope in degrees divided by 0 0.0896 and we raise that term to the power of 1.3. 1.3 was mentioned in the beginning of this video but uh, 1.4 was also what I found in literature so different uh, parameters can be used and uh, it's a relative index so it probably depends on your area which gives the best result. So save the result also to a TIFF file, doesn't work with the PC raster output. And here is the result, and let's style the result, single and pseudo color. And uh, here you see it, um, there's also a huge range of uh, values. We can play with the min max uh, settings and cap the max to maybe 20 to see more contrast. So here, high values of STI indicate areas of the landscape where overland flow is a high potential for erosion and transport. So if these were many steps for you, I also made uh, them available as tools through the resource sharing plugin. Install the QGIS resource sharing plugin. Use the green icon that was added. Go to settings and click add repository. Call it PC Raster and add the URL to the PC Raster GitHub repository for the resource sharing tools. Then go to All Collections and install QGIS PC Raster User Script Collection and it will add 13 processing tools. You'll find them under Scripts and there you see Sediment Transport Index and Stream Power Index. Let's test it. I have a DEM here in PC Raster format. And I choose an output layer. Make sure to change the extension to pcraster.map because we are using PC Raster functions only. And click Run. 
and there's the result which we can style. And here it is with the inverted color ramp. So in yellow more the deposition and in uh, blue more the erosion. Now I do the sediment transport index. Call it sti.map and run it. Note that here we can set the m and the n parameter of the equation, the exponents. And here's the result. It has a lot of no data values. We previously also had that, but the layers below uh, obscured it a bit. Here we can see it, and um, we can cap the max as we did before. So we don't only see the extreme values there. And then when we zoom in, we can see the sediment transport index. So I hope this video was uh, useful. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to receive updates. See you next time.